I might lose my mind on this one. My name is Skylar. Today we are sparking an obsession over the S Gundam Booster Unit No Grade Kit from 1988. Check out my video on the unboxing of it. Somewhere on my screen here is the quick speed build of it and then we're going to talk about all the ways that I love and hate this kit. Let's get right into the video. Thank you guys for watching. Let's go! Gundam Sentinel is by far my favorite side storyline in all of Gundam. Set between the final stages of Zeta Gundam and the early stages of Double Zeta Gundam in the Universal Century timeline, it shows the Earth Federation's efforts to stop an insurrection of elite Federation officers. It never saw animation outside of a few SD video games and random cameos, but rather it was serialized in model graphics magazines between 1987 and 1988. This S Gundam or Superior Gundam model kit was produced in 1988 as well. Gundam Sentinel took on a much more realistic technical style of thinking and look at the Gundam universe. Mobile suits were seen more as fighter jets or military weapons rather than heroic robots. They were larger, had weapons more powerful than their predecessors, the characters were older, and the plot was on a smaller scale than it usually was found in other Gundam series. It also marked the debut of Hajime Katoki, who would become one of the franchise's most prolific mechanical designers. You know him better for taking all your money, let's be honest. I just thought it'd be really cool to put this chunky boy next to this even chunkier boy and show you exactly how massive this kit is. This is going to be my second Backlog Buster series, and I'm going to finish doing this Deep Striker, and we're definitely going to paint him and make him look really awesome but right now he's currently my dining room table decoration and people have to eat around him <laughs> let's get into s gun i'm waiting for him to just grenade himself out of existence don't do it don't even think about it don't even think about falling apart don't do it i'm gonna go assess the damage now thanks bye oh i don't i don't <laughs> i don't even know where the pieces went Ah! This is just the reality of Gunpla, people. The reality of Gunpla is that things are gonna fall off. My report is that I can't find the piece that yeeted itself out of existence. Number one problem about this kit is it just falls apart like that. To its credit, I was shaking it fairly aggressively. I don't know. But I will say that as a 1988 kit here, um, she, you know what? Not too bad. Now, the thing about these kits is they were made in a time where it was expected that modelers would paint, use cement, use various materials. Like it was more than just the snap builds that we see today. So to its credit, it is doing exactly as well as you would expect it would do without adhesive or cement or anything like that so snap build straight out the box I didn't do anything crazy because I fully expect to do the entire project of it it didn't do too bad but like I said as you saw you shake it a couple of times it will fall off its vent pieces will not stay on without cement head is uh barely on as you can see here I'm pretty much having to make it look like it's actually on to be able to make sure that it stays on so the head is going to need some modification. There's something about the poly cap, the PC joint there. You can see the seam lines are not put all the way together and it's just, it's not. I'm going to have a heart attack. You can see it's literally just a little nub right there. So it's just, it's not made to really hold very well. I'm definitely going to make a couple of videos showing you and using this kit to show you some of the things that you can do to help with your older model kit. Short and sweet part of it, it does good for what it's supposed to do, but as you can see, its joints are not very well put together. But overall, it's it's pretty solid, minus the head um, and part of the fin pieces and everything like that have been coming off. But again, does not have cement. Cement is necessary. Cement and just putty, everything. Everything's necessary on this. So. To be expected, 
mildly inconvenient if you are just buying this kit because they are fairly affordable. If you just bought this kit and you weren't aware of everything that was required for the project, I could totally see where you'd be like, what the heck, this thing's a piece of crap. But it's not, you have to remember that they're supposed to be built like that. They're supposed to be giant projects. So that is probably my number one point is that she's gonna require quite a bit of attention which I'm okay with, I like a challenge, but if you yourself are a builder who likes a snap build, I would go closer to the 2020 kits. I wouldn't even bother with anything below, hmm, let me think about this. Anything below 2003. 2003 and up, there's a couple of little sketchy kits there between four and five, but 2003 and up, you're generally in the clear. They're closer to being snap build, not requiring much attention. But today, today's kits, if you go to Target, which they sell Gunpla at Target now, by the way. Thanks, PewDiePie. But Target, you go to Target, you can buy a couple of HG kits. They even have a Master Grade Barbados, which I think is really cool. But again, closer you go to newer kits, the better off you'll be. Continuing on with my constructive criticism of this 1988 kit, I want to go ahead and input some footage as well as the remaining... Goosefraba, Goosefraba. I'm gonna show the footage that I have here completing the booster unit and what I did to get rid of these actual nub marks here. Um, again, I didn't, I just snap built this. I use a Tamiya sharp sided nipper. I have a video on that one. I highly suggest that nipper set. It's very good. Even with a good set of nippers, the stress marks still happen on this kit. Use Tamiya sharp sided nippers. Um, God hands are the expensive ones, but my budget one is the Tamiya sharp sided nipper. I will put it up here at the top of the video and you guys can check it out if you want to. But Tamiya sharp one sided nippers, they are my go to holy grail. God hands, just. They're too fragile. This right here is exactly what I'm talking about, how easy it is. I'm just gonna show you. Now, I know everyone does things a little bit differently, but I just wanna show you exactly how easy it is to shave off. Look, you can see my shavings right there on my actual X-Acto knife. Shave it off so easy, so simple. It's probably one of the easiest pe like easiest types of plastic I've ever really worked with. And then of course I'll sand it with like 1000 grit or 1500 grit and get it completely down. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna individually go over everything on this kit so we can get it prepared for actually painting and doing it some justice. She's gonna be a long project because there's things like we have to make the poly caps fit a little bit better. We have to make certain pieces fit better. We're gonna have to manufacture some pieces. We're gonna have to add material somewhere to make it stronger. And just straight up, some of it's just gonna need a bunch of Tamiya cement. With just out doing an entire overhaul of it, that's pretty much what you're gonna be relegated to. But we're gonna do our best to make her look pretty. <laughs> Can you hear that? It's pliable, it's kind of, easy to work with which in my footage here i'll show you that as well it's really easy to work with it moves uh fairly easily and it twists you can tell that it has quite a bit of bow to the point that if you really tried decently hard you could probably snap this in half but again that goes with a the type of plastic that they used um back in the day and the age of the kit. Um, this is an actual 1988 kit. If you ever wanna know the production of the kit, it's not always going to be accurate because Bandai does regularly reproduce kits. They reuse runners, they reproduce kits all the time for different releases, but the main production of the kit or its own series will be on the front of the box. Again, that is not always accurate. You have to do a little bit more research Really, there's no way to really truly tell. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But I haven't really found a good way. And honestly, does it really matter? Mm, kind of, kind of. But again, I mean, you can also look at the booklet too. There's patent numbers and reference numbers. There's a painting guide on the back as well, which is going to be necessary for this kit. But just thought I'd let you know that if you want to know the year of a kit or the general year of the kit, then check out the front of the actual box itself 
or it's manual. Okay, the only other problem that I have with this kit, aside from it falling apart, aside from it's very, very easy, malleable plastic and stress marks that happen that are gonna require a bit of TLC, is another thing here. Let me see if I can show you. Let me see if I can show you here. So as you can see, the seam lines, no matter how hard you press them together, they don't quite meet exactly where you want them to meet. And in addition to that as well, the molding process on a lot of these kits led to excess plastic, things that need to be sanded down, and just overall generally just a little bit more work than just snap building. Now, this is not a problem. It is expected that you are going to be doing these as a project, so it's not even really a, a nick against it. It's more just be aware that you're going to have to do a little bit of extra things to make it look really good. Now, that being said, I like the look of it. I think that it's awesome and I think that with a little TLC, a little modification, some paint, it could be really, really cool and look just as good as Deep Striker here. Deep Striker, look, like it looks amazing. The details are good. It's strong, it's solid. It's not falling apart on you. But again, for an older kit, it really, truly, it, it, it's pretty impressive, I'm not gonna lie. My lights are really good, and when I saw it sitting here on my table before I began filming, I was like, you know what? She looks kind of good. Now, her posability, her posability is, is crap. Um, there's really not a lot to it, but we're gonna fix that. Um, she could use a bit more scribing. She does not have decals on because I intend on painting her. So that would solve this issue of the collar not being yellow. We're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna paint it exactly the way that it's supposed to be painted. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna build the excess as well. Matter of fact, I got it right here. Still sealed, how amazing is that? But yeah, you know what? I'm gonna build this one and it'll probably be one of my next couple of videos and we'll put them side by side. Cause this is, I mean, this is S Gundam, this is Superior Gundam, this is just excess. It's literally, it's just same kit, different attachments. Same thing with Deep Striker too. Overall, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with it because a, I just really like the kit. I love Sentinel. Like I, I could give you guys a whole history lesson on it and just character profiles and everything like that. Cause literally, truly, Sentinel is 100% one of my favorite side stories. What's your favorite side story? I'm actually quite curious about that because I don't really meet that many people who really like Sentinel or even know of its existence and I think it's such an important side story. I don't know. What's your favorite side story? But yes, just to reiterate again, look like, you know, it doesn't quite meet. It's gonna need a lot of Tamiya cement. Um, but you know what? I am optimistic that it's gonna look so good and I'm actually quite excited to do the project. Overall, I liked the build. The build was super easy. It, it took me like 35 minutes to build it. Um, like I said, just snap, 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 put it together. Really not that bad. I actually quite enjoyed the build. It wasn't too crazy or frustrating or anything like that, but really the bad, it falls apart. It requires a little bit of work. Um, it needs a little bit better articulation. It's seam lines aren't so good. But overall, aesthetically, I really like the kit. I enjoyed the build. And I'm looking forward to making it not, <laughs> not look like that. Like these little peg leg joints right there. No shame, you're beautiful, it's just the way you are. A little bit of help, but that's okay. We love a project and it's an awesome learning experience. So what do you guys think? Have you, there goes another piece falling again. I should compile all the footage of all these pieces falling off again. I really shouldn't be surprised though. I didn't cement any of these down. And the fact that it's even holding itself together as I'm holding it in my hand, pretty impressive. If you know my track record of holding kits on camera, <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> Ask my F91 metal build here what happened. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have built any really cool older kits, what your favorite older kit is. Do you prefer older kits over newer kits? And yeah, let me know what you're working on too. I'm really excited about that. Thank you for watching and we are going to say goodbye for now. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Definitely, please be sure to check out my Instagram community and all my other social media. My community is absolutely amazing, the best.
not going to be the last time you see either of us. 